Hi, my name is Paul Command. I'm a nephrologist with the uh, Manitoba Renal Program at Seven Oaks General Hospital. I'm Associate Professor of Medicine at University of Manitoba. Uh, so kidney health research is important on a number of fronts. Uh, obviously, um, uh, many people don't know, but chronic kidney disease affects about 10 to 15 percent of the population. Um, again, it's associated very highly with uh, early mortality, uh, cardiovascular disease, and of course, in its end-stage form, the need for life-sustaining dialysis. Uh, patients requiring life-sustaining dialysis have a very high mortality rate, very poor quality of life, uh, so to speak. So I think for, and, and of course, it consumes a lot of healthcare resources. Um, so I think from a public health perspective, uh, from a patient quality of life perspective, and from a cost-effectiveness perspective, we need uh, innovative new solutions to keep people off of dialysis, keep them healthy with chronic kidney disease for longer, um, and, uh, and restore quality of life uh, to them. So the section of nephrology in University of Manitoba has a very strong pedigree of research excellence over the last uh, 20, 30 years or so or more. Um, uh, the, the, the cornerstone of our research strength in the section, I think, has been around uh, transplant nephrology. We have a, a world-class uh, transplant uh, uh, researchers, uh, Dr. Rush, Dr. Nickerson, uh, you know, Julie Ho, Leroy Storsley, and Chris Weeb at, at Health Sciences Centre that have really carried on groundbreaking research and protocol biopsies and detecting markers of early transplant rejection and so on. Um, there's another sort of uh, cadre of researchers that have uh, sort of emerged in uh, through a different arm of research um, uh, that, uh, that again, you know, my group here at Seven Oaks with myself and, and Dr. Regatto and Dr. Tangri, um, as well as uh, colleagues at Health Sciences Centre, you know, Dr. Miller and uh, Dr. Bohm and others, um, we're really focusing on, uh, on more clinical epidemiology research, uh, some, some work around the science of risk prediction or predicting which patients um, you know, are at risk to go into dialysis, which patients are at high enough risk that we actually need to see them in, in consultation nephrology. Um, we do uh, a considerable amount of work looking at frailty uh, in chronic kidney disease, so Dr. Tang is leading a lot of those efforts. Um, frailty means, it's a, frailty is a sort of a catch-all term for um, not synonymous with aging, but certainly associated with aging, meaning as people get older, maybe you're on dialysis, more comorbid conditions, um, they generally have, uh, you know, can have a higher incidence of depression, uh, reduced muscle strength, um, sort of slow gait speed, that type of thing. So we're doing a, a, the largest ever uh, undertaken study um, on, on looking at those domains of frailty in chronic kidney disease, in home dialysis modalities, in transplant, uh, to see if there's interventions earlier on that we can do to improve some of those domains of frailty and again restore quality of life to patients. So it's very applicable research in that end. So you know, again, we're working very closely at all three sites in assessing frailties. Um, we're working very uh, closely with the Wellness Institute with the exercise program Dr. Bohm heads up currently. Um, and, and that's been a real uh, source of uh, strength research for us. Um, other projects we're working on, um, you know, we've got a lot of uh, collaboration with cardiac sciences currently right now, uh, our group that's led by primarily Dr. Regatto and, and uh, Dr. Rakesh Arora, one of the cardiac surgeons at St. Boniface Hospital. Again, we're doing a lot of work with frailty around um, acute kidney injury during cardiac surgery and, and how we can maybe intervene earlier in cardiac surgery patients, improve their quality of life and improve outcomes for cardiac surgery patients. Uh, we've done a lot of work with sort of um, biomarkers or new ways of testing for disease. So, so again, uh, Dr. Regatto sort of leads our translational biology arm of research, which means, you know, we have a lot of markers right now, cholesterol, high blood pressure, um, creatinine for kidney function. What, what they're doing is looking at new um, markers of disease in the serum or the urine uh, that might be able, you know, able, able for, uh, we can use them to predict um, bad outcomes or, or, or poor quality of life or things that uh, we could intervene to, to, to improve outcomes for patients in that, in that angle. One of the projects that we're very excited about in terms of a public health intervention um, is the finished project, which, which people have uh, heard about and there's been a lot of media attention around that. And that was a, a $1.6 million project we were funded for in 2012. Um, so I lead that project along with Dr. Tangreen Regatto, um, but it's also a very strong partnership with the Diabetes Integration Project, which is a First Nations-led uh, initiative that's going on for several years, funded by Health Canada, 
their original mandate was to go out to underserviced uh, rural and remote First Nations communities and screen those communities for diabetes and complications of diabetes and intervene using sort of indigenous uh, traditional ways of, of uh, healing in addition to sort of more Western medicine. Um, and actually connect up some of those people with specialists that, that, you know, that would enhance their care when, again, they're in often underserviced communities without physicians. Um, our work uh, had also centered around, in the Manitoba Renal Program on the university side, it centered around, I mean, obviously we've seen a, uh, an increase in the number of dialysis patients from rural remote communities over the last 20 years or so. Um, and, and again, seeing a lot of uh, disproportionate number of First Nations people sorting dialysis earlier on. Uh, than, than perhaps other groups um, and coming from remote communities. And again, there has to be a link there, I think, between you know, poor access to primary care, poverty, a lot of other uh, things that affect those communities that, that we don't have to deal with in the city. And uh, putting our, our collective work, to your collective minds together with the research and the renal program staff, in addition to the Diabetes Integration Project staff, Dr. Barry Lavely, Carolyn Chartrand, and, and uh, Lorraine McLeod, uh, we, we got secured this funding to do um, remote uh, point of care screening for chronic kidney disease and we actually use very state-of-the-art technologies we actually from with a, a small drop of blood and a small sample of urine we can collect uh, all the necessary blood chemistry and urine protein markers to feed into a risk prediction equation that was actually developed by Dr. Tangri uh, during his PhD thesis. Um, we plug all those parameters into an iPad, which gives us an, an, an instant algorithm that we, we created here at Seven Oaks, an, an instant algorithm to, um, to declare whether someone's at low, medium, or high risk of kidney failure in the next five years. And subsequently, we can see those high risk and intermediate risk referrals instantly down in Winnipeg at Seven Oaks Hospital um, and get them into our interdisciplinary real health clinics. And the ones at low risk, we can sort of do more of a passive surveillance or let their community um, practitioners and the local practitioners know that we should be sc uh, you know, screening these people on an annual basis and treating them appropriately. Um, and I really think it's an innovative way of delivering sort of mass chronic kidney disease uh, care at a population level in a, in a community and a population that really needs it. Um, you know, we've, we've just recently published here a systematic review on the cost effectiveness of screening for chronic kidney disease. And, and we really found, we sort of confirmed our suspicion that no, um, it's not cost effective to go screen the entire population for chronic kidney disease. It probably would generate a lot of unnecessary referrals, unnecessary treatment and, and possible harm um, for people that, that really are low risk of dialysis or bad outcomes down the road. Um, it makes a lot of sense and it's very cost effective to screen people with the risk factors for kidney failure, which are things like high blood pressure and diabetes. Um, where we're seeing sort of maybe the middle ground in some of these rural, rural and remote First Nations communities is they have such a high prevalence of type 2 diabetes in those communities, they have such poor access to primary care that it may very well make economic sense and sense from a public health perspective to screen those entire communities in the, in the way we're doing. Um, again, we, won't, we don't know that for sure um, unless we actually do that intervention and actually test it against communities we're not doing mass screening. So one of the next initi initiatives we're applying for further funding from the Canadian Institute for Health Research um, is to do what's called a cluster randomized control trial. What that entails is we will be taking, say, a group of 30 communities and splitting them up by you know, size of community, how remote those communities are, um, how, how engaged that community is and willing to participate in an initiative like this. And we'll then randomly allocate them to one of two arms. One arm being we'll go in and we'll teach the local people um, the local healthcare workers, the local Aboriginal Diabetes Initiative workers. Um, we'll do a sort of a, a, a marketing media campaign about raising awareness about chronic kidney disease, how important it is to do um, episodic screening of people who have high blood pressure or diabetes or other risk factors. And then we'll do that in the randomized communities in the other arm, but we'll also do our mass screening initiative. And then we'll monitor outcomes sort of at two, three, four, and five years out in terms of the new disease we're seeing how many are appropriately getting referred to you know, interdisciplinary nephrology clinics that need to be and so on and so forth. And then we'll have a, a good idea in terms of how efficacious this model, this innovative model of care might be. Um, our suspicion is obviously we're, we're, we're doing a really positive thing, but we really want to sort of validate that in a scientific way. Um, and, and this might be a new model of care we could export nationally or even internationally for other sort of rural remote places that have high prevalence of disease and maybe inadequate uh, access to primary care.
Very excited at the at the new. Um, I mean, obviously, we, again, with the pedigree of, uh, of transplant research we have, we're, we're building. We're kind of standing on the shoulders of giants, so to speak. Uh, you know, we've got a very good track record and history of research here. And I'm very excited about um, what we've built now as sort of a new infrastructure for the type of research that, that, that we have expertise in here at Seven Oaks. And again, some of the researchers at, uh, at Health Sciences Center that do this type of research in clinical epidemiology, public health awareness, um, you know, frailty exercise, uh, that type of thing. Um, and, and I think you know, the, the new research lab, so to speak, what we run is a, is a dry research lab, meaning that uh, you know, we have infrastructure with uh, computing power, uh, computer programmers, communications coordinators, project managers. Um, uh, we're, we're establishing a portal to the Manitoba Center for Health Policy uh, so we can get access to a lot of the large administrative data sets that, that are housed within Manitoba Health. Um, and, and this sort of it's a dry research lab, meaning we're not working with reagents and chemicals and test tubes, um, but uh, we're really establishing that infrastructure that we can nimbly answer um, important public health and research questions that's really directly applicable um, to clinical practice in, in real time. Um, you know, again, uh, basic science research and biology type research is critically important to moving our knowledge and understanding of disease forward and, and developing new um, therapeutic targets for, for intervening in disease. Um, but it's equally important to have you know, the type of research that we do in terms of um, mining data and using clinical epidemiology skills and cost effectiveness skills to, to answer different research questions. And I'm really excited that those two platforms can really work in, in, in synergy um, over the next 5, 10, 15 years. Um, to pave the way for, uh, for the next generation of, uh, of people suffering from chronic kidney disease.